Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am Nick from Australia. Tonight's video is going to be my New Zealand Warriors team of the decade from 2010 to 2020. Uh, but, but before I get into tonight's video, I just want to say that a big shout out to a YouTuber by the name of Paddy G. Now, Paddy G is a great and close personal friend of mine. He has a YouTube channel. He's doing a fantastic job. And, um, Paddy G is actually the first ever person to ever donate to the channel. So I just want to say thank you to Paddy G for the $5 donation. Even though people will say, oh, it's only $5. First ever donation that I ever received last night from Paddy G. So, you know, I really do appreciate it. So thank you to Paddy G. And, you know, if you guys want to donate in the, um, it, it's up to you guys. But personally, I don't really care. But uh, up to you if you want to donate. There's a link in the description below. But let's get into tonight's video. The New Zealand Warriors, team of the decade from 2010 to 2020. Not an easy list to put together. The Warriors have had a decent decade, not a not a brilliant decade by any means. They've only played in two final series since 2010. 2011, they obviously made the grand final. And then they made finals again in 2018. They missed the finals in 2012, where they expected to do well. 13 was a bad year for them. 14, they missed the finals. 15 was another bad year. 16, it was a bad year. 2017, they were expected to finish top four. They didn't even make the finals. 2018, they had a bet, bet. They had a better year. They finished, um, what was it, seventh? I think that year, and they went out the first week. And then 2019, uh, no good again. And then 2020, they just fell, it fell short this year. So it's been an, it's been a pretty average decade for the New Zealand Warriors. But you know, I like the Warriors a lot. I really want to see them do well. The NRL needs the Warriors to be doing well because you need to be growing the game in New Zealand. You need to. Make it the best game over there, so, and, and you know you need to make the New Zealand Warriors a really big club. So hopefully they have some good. Hopefully, hopefully they have a good decade now, from 2020 to 2030. But let's go through the one to 17 team that I've got. I'll also let you know my coach of the decade for the Warriors, and we'll go through it. So fullback, I've got Roger Tuivasa Shek on the wings, David Fusatua and Manu Vatuve in the centres, Peter Hiku and Jerome Rapati. In the halves, Lance Ho Hire and Sean Johnson. The front row of Jacob Lilliman and Ben Matalino. The hooker is Nathan Friend. The back row of Lewis Brown and Tolhu Harris. The lock is Simon Mannering. And on the interchange bench, I have got Kevin Locke, Michael Luck, Sam Rapira, and Ryan Hoffman. The coach of the decade for the Warriors is Ivan Cleary. Now, Having a look at the Warriors coaching uh, coaches for the last decade, they haven't. Had, they have had a lot of ch coaches. Now, Ivan Cleary is the only one that's got a decent, decent success with the Warriors. In 2011, they made the grand final and they fell short. And that at the end of 2012, he was sacked. But you know, he was there for three years. I think 10, 11, 12, and then he was axed at the end of 2012. But out of all the other coaches that were there, I think Ivan Cleary is the only one that I can really name that was actually quite good. So. Ivan Cleary is the coach of the decade. Now, fullback, I got to advice a check. I think that's a pretty, pretty, pretty obvious one. He's probably been the best fullback for the Warriors the last decade. But, uh, you know, I think RTS is one, one of those once in a generation players. And having a look at all the other fullbacks that were around from 2010 to 2020, there wasn't many contenders. So, to advice a check at fullback was a pretty easy one for mine. The wingers, David Fusatua and Manu Vatuve. Now, Fusatua. Uh, he's been he's been at the Warriors for a very long time. He used to play a bit of center. Now he's on the wing. Definitely a better winger than a center. I think David Fusa too was a fantastic player. And um, you know, but between him and Kemba Marlow, I think I would prefer Fusa Tua. So I got Fusa Tua on the wing. The other one is Manu Vatuve. Probably one of the first guys picked in this team of the decade. To be honest, what a player he was, Manu Vatuve on the wing. He was a nightmare. I mean, just imagine. Going into going into that week against the Warriors, and you look, and if you're a winger, and you're looking at the team list shed, and you're thinking, "Oh no, I'm up against Manu. This is going to be fun," and you, you just get smashed every time. So Manu was on the wing. He, he was a great player, man. What a player he was. The centers: Peter Hiku and Jerome Rapati. Uh, Peter Hiku is still, still the Warriors at the moment. He's 
He's been playing really well. He saved his career last year, I reckon. He um, changed the way he played, and I think he deserves to be in his team of the decade. He hasn't been there for as long as other players, but Peter Hickey's been good the Warriors, so he makes the centers. On with Jerome Rapati, who doesn't play anymore. He, had to, he retired, but, man, Jerome Rapati was a really decent player for the Warriors. Uh, he did a pretty good job for them. Probably um, more known for his 2007 to 2011 days, but... Man, Jerome Rapati, man, he was a really solid player for the Warriors. The halves, Lance O'Hire and Sean Johnson. Now, Lance O'Hire was a bit of a fullback, a bit of a 5'8", a bit all over the shop. But I feel like he had to be in this team somewhere, so I decided to put him at 5'8". And, you know, he was a really so solid player, Lance O'Hire. Pretty underrated, in my opinion. And, you know, I thought he did enough to make the team of the decade for this list. Halfback is Sean Johnson. Now, pretty much a no-brainer. He won the golden boot for the Warriors. You know, he, he had that amazing debut year in 2011 where the Warriors went down to the Seagulls in that grand final. But, um, now Sean Johnson, man, he had a great run at the Warriors. And um, I think he is a no-brainer for this list. The front row of Jacob Lilliman and Ben Matalino. Now, Jacob Lilliman was a pretty solid player, man. Played a few State of Origins. He was a pretty underrated player compared to the other front rowers at his era during the time, you know. I think he always did a good job, Jacob Lilliman. I always liked him as a player. Um, yeah, he was solid, and I think he deserves to be in this team somewhere. The other front row was Ben Matalino, pro probably more known for his, um, you know, he, he played a lot of games for the Warriors and the West Tigers, so, you know, I thought Ben Matalino was always a good player. He had a few injuries at the back end of his career, but his uh, run at the Warriors was quite solid, so I think he deserves to be here as well. And the hooker I got is Nathan Fran. Now, I know, I know Nathan Fran was more of a, a utility, could play in the halves, bit of hooker, bit all over the place. But I feel like Nathan Fran, out of all the hookers the Warriors have had the last 10 years, Nathan Fran's probably been the best one. Some would say Isaac Luke, but I think I'd rate Nathan Fran a bit higher than Isaac Luke when they were both at the Warriors. So I've got Nathan Fran as the hooker. The back row of Lewis Brown and Tohu Harris. Now, Lewis Brown, he was a solid player, man. He played a bit of center, a lot of back row. He played, played both positions quite well. I remember that try he scored in the 2011 preliminary final where he scored that try against Melbourne to pretty much get them to the grand final. And, you know, he was a pretty versatile player. Lewis Brown could play center, could play back row, but I reckon he was a better back row anyway. But, yeah, he had a great career, Lewis Brown, at the Warriors and, you know, he definitely makes his team somewhere for mine, so he's in the back row. Along with Tohu Harris. Now, Tohu Harris, probably more known for his Melbourne Storm days, but, man, he's been pretty solid at the Warriors. I know when the Warriors were struggling, a lot of people were criticising Tohu Harris for his form, but, you know, he still went out there and did a decent job for him. So, you know, Tohu Harris, he had a breakout year in 2020. I look forward to seeing how he goes in 2021, but his uh, career at the Warriors, at the New Zealand Warriors, has been, has been quite solid in my opinion. The lock is Simon Mannering, probably the first bloke picked here, to be honest. He played a back row, a lock, a very good captain for the Warriors, a very underrated player, very consistent, was an absolute workhorse, and I think Simon Mannering deserves to be in this team. He's probably the first bloke picked, to be honest. Now, on the bench, I've got Kevin Locke as that jersey 14. Now, Kevin Locke, man, before we um, lost form and went off the rails, man. He was such a good player. He was a strike fullback, man. He, he was so quick. He had, he, he had it all, Kevin Locke, and his run at the Warriors was absolutely fantastic. I know 2011 was a massive year for him, and Kevin Locke was a great player for the Warriors, so he definitely makes the team somewhere for mine. The other two fools I got for front row or Locke, wherever, Michael Locke and Sam Rapera. Now, Michael Locke, Man, this bloke was the ultimate lock. He could play a bit of back row here and there, front row if you had injuries. He was a very solid player, Michael Luck. He did a lot of good things at the Warriors. He was a very consistent player. Always did a job for your t for his teammates. And, um, yeah, Michael Luck, man, he makes the team somewhere. What a player he was. The other front row was Sam Rapira. Now, Sam Rapira, probably a pretty... Um, Overlooked player, I think. I guess you could say he was underrated a little bit. You know, he was overlooked a lot. A lot of play, a lot of um, people go, oh, Sam Rapier, big deal. But he was always out there putting in the hard yards, making the tackles, you know, doing all, doing all the small things right for the team. And 
He, he always did a good job saving Pereira, so he makes the team as well. And the other player I had was Ryan Hoffman. Now, Ryan Hoffman, definitely more known for his Melbourne Storm days, but it, when he was at the Warriors, man, he was pretty solid. I know it was at the back end of his career when he was at the um, at the Warriors. You know, he was at the Storm, then he was at the Warriors, and he went back to the Storm again. So, you know, Ryan Hoffman, a pretty underrated, consistent back rower. Always did a job. Always worried the defensive line in his prime anyway. He was a really solid player, Ryan Hoffman. I think he deserves to make this team somewhere. Whether you agree or disagree, that was my Warriors team of the decade, guys. Let me know in the comment section below what your Warriors team of the decade is. I'd love to see your comments below and who you got for team of the decade. Is there anyone I, I forgot about? Is there anyone that you think shouldn't be on this list? Let me know in the comment section below. But... Anyway, guys, that's my New Zealand Warriors team of the decade. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you guys go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day or night to watch this video. Um, I'm getting out of here, guys. Have a fantastic Thursday night, and I'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon for another team of the decade video. All right, guys, stay safe, and um, I'll see you guys in the next one.